seat. Republican candidates were, of course, quick to respond to yesterday's stock market slide. Today, the market tanks 500 plus points. Ladies and gentlemen, there's no confidence in this economy. There is no confidence in our direction. And I'm here to say it is un-American. The slide with the Dow today being such a large number is the market's reaction to the debt deal which didn't solve the problem of reducing the debt. Everywhere I go you get the same message which is that the bureaucratic socialism of the Obama administration and the centralized control by bureaucrats is driving jobs out of the United States. What's gone wrong is we don't have a president uh, who understands that we need to have a private economy not just a government economy growing. David Drucker is a staff writer at Roll Call. Matt Makoviak is a Republican strategist. And Cynthia Tucker is a political columnist for the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. And all joining me now, well, some relief, the jobs numbers. But, uh, David, what we're looking at now is still an economy either stalled or going backwards. And very few options for the president. This is a field day for Republicans. Well, look, um, all of this is about expectations. And what I find interesting is that 117,000 jobs created when you need more than 250. 50,000 a month to actually do something about unemployment is considered good news because the expectations were so much worse. And for the president, he's in a tough spot. I, I often find over the years that presidents get both more credit and more blame than they deserve. And there's very little he can do about this except try and put into policies, put into place policies that can actually create an atmosphere for job creation. And I think he's going to have a tough time making a real dent in the unemployment rate and the economic environment between between now and next summer, and that's a huge problem for his reelection. And the, the news for Republicans is that they can take, it's almost a free shot uh, for them, Matt. If you're a Republican strategist on any of these campaigns right now, you basically beat up on the president and say that you could do a better job. That's right. You say that, that the recovery is so weak that while he inherited a difficult situation, he's not only made it worse, but that it hasn't recovered to the extent it should have. And, and so I think that the psychological impact of the economy is you can see it really in two statistics. Uh, it's the unemployment rate and the price of gas. You look at the Dow, that's for investors, that's for people that have pensions. But primarily it's those two statistics that people pay attention to. And so when you talk about the stimulus, you talk about the trillion dollar Obamacare bill, uh, you talk about some of these other regulations they put in place, Republicans can effectively argue that, that Obama has increased uncertainty and, and really had a target on job creators from the very beginning. And Cynthia, when the president was at his birthday, pre-birthday celebration in Chicago and trying to raise money for the campaign, he basically said, no one said change was going to come quickly. That's not a great bumper sticker. No, that's a terrible bumper sticker. And while I agree with David that presidents tend to get more credit when the economy is good than they deserve and more blame when it's bad, and this is a global mess, let's bear in mind, there are several things that the president did wrong here. And the biggest one is allowing Republicans Republicans to change the narrative so that we've all we've been hearing is that we need to conquer the debt we need to conquer the debt well no mainstream economist says that what we need to do at the moment is conquer the debt the US had a long-term debt problem not a short-term one what we need to do at the moment is invest more give people bigger unemployment benefits so they have money to spend and that creates demand let's talk about the Republican field right now now, we're a week ahead of Ames, and when you look at what they're trying to do, uh, David, to sell themselves to the voters in Ames, <laughs> it's almost a field day. Yeah, well, the interesting thing about Ames, and look, I'm as much of a junkie as anybody, but Ames doesn't matter on the Republican side of the aisle the way we would like to think it does. I can't really remember the last time winning Ames meant you were a shoe-in to really uh, move forward and win the nomination. And so, as important as it is for certain candidates, and I think that's what we're watching for, how does Herman Cain do? How does Tim Pawlenty do? Does Michelle Bachman uh, deliver the way we think she's going to deliver um, in terms of the expectations for her success in Iowa? Um, there are other straw polls coming, other campaigns coming, and it, what it really means to me is this is the real kickoff of the Republican presidential race. No longer after Ames will I say, oh, it's too early. <laughs> and Matt, uh, in terms of the expectation game, how does Bachman have to finish in the straw poll, for instance? Uh, what about Palenti? Is this 
really a, a crisis point for his campaign. Well, it could be. I mean, you know, if you have a bad straw poll in Ames and you focused on Iowa, not just for the straw poll, but also for the caucuses, and you don't perform, you underperform, it's going to be hard on fundraising, it's going to be hard on signing up uh, volunteers and activists. The problem is there's four candidates who need to finish in the top three, right? Bachman, uh, Paul Enti, Herman Cain, and probably Ron Paul. There's only four, 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 uh, there's four candidates and there's only three chairs when the music stops. So I think one of them's likely to either be out or be in really tough shape at that point. But Paul Enti needs to do well in Iowa, there's no question. I think he's got the best organization in Iowa, those four candidates, so I think he could do well. But Bachman is the person that has momentum. And the stuff that they're doing, the things that they're handing out and trying to get people to, to come to the straw poll for them. And we're talking about really small numbers, but this is retail politics at its best, best or worst, but it's wonderful. It's Iowa. Um, Herman Cain's Godfather's Pizza. Um, but, you know, it is absolutely true that the AIM straw poll is absolutely inconsequential in the long term. But it does help us in the news media create a narrative. And that narrative helps to drive fundraising. So the candidate who does not do well or the candidate who falls out of the top three is unlikely to draw very much money going forward. And as we saw, Tim Pawlenty is already pulling his ads down. So he's already in a crunch situation. Uh, Cynthia, I wanted to ask you because you know the Bible Belt so well. Uh, about the impact of what Rick Perry is doing in drawing together what he has defined as a Christian prayer summit and in having people like John Hagee and others who are so controversial being part of it. This is absolute red meat for the Republican base. Uh, Rick Perry knows exactly what he's doing and all signs point to his getting into the presidential field. Why else would he do this now? It draws attention to him on this very important weekend in Iowa. And this is exactly what uh, the Republican base wants to see. It gives them an alternative to uh, Mitt Romney, who many of them are uncomfortable with. Uh, they want an evangelical. Uh, it may give Rick Perry a problem were he to win the nomination in the general election, but it gives him a lot of very strong support if he decides to get into the presidential field. Matt, you know the area really well. This is red meat for the base and it could propel him and uh, I was just interviewing Kay Bailey Hutchison who should know better than anyone having lost to Rick Perry she said he's a candidate yeah she's my former boss and I mean I agree with her that that um, encouraging prayer is not a bad thing I, I understand there's an ecumenical versus Christian question there uh, keep in mind that this event was set up before he said he was going to consider running for president I do not believe this is part of his presidential plans there's been so much controversy it's an event that he doesn't even own it's an event that someone else owns that he may not even speak at now so I think if he could do it all I over think, again I think I would bet right now from what we're hearing that he's going to be speaking. I, I suspect that's right, but I think he wants to have some flexibility in case there's some controversy towards the end. But ultimately, look, you're going to get past Ames. I think he's going to get in the last two weeks of August, probably the last week of August. And he's going to be the one holding the cards. He's going to be the last candidate that can get in that can, that can dramatically shape the field. He's got a great record in Texas in terms of job creation. It's going to play really nicely into the field. And I also think he's going to be the anti-Romney candidate, the strongest potential anti-Romney candidate. David? Well, this is what happens when you're a governor and things you do work great when you're a governor only playing to a local constituency. Then you get onto the national stage and all of a sudden it causes you problems. Don't forget, um, the evangelical vote is still important in Republican circles, but Tea Party activists and most Republicans are concerned about the economy. That's where their focus <laughs> is. So if you're making a play to win the Republican presidential nomination this year, I don't think this kind of event is what you designed to do that. And I think that Perry's team is kind of caught up in getting into the race at the last minute and having previous commitments as governor get in the way of that, um, it'll be interesting to see who shows up at this event. As we know, it was designed to attract other governors. They're not showing up. Uh, they're not sure if they can even fill like one eighth of the stadium where it's designed to be held. Um, so it's... I, I wouldn't read too much into the evangelical vote in this event because I think it's slightly less important this year than it was four years ago. Well, stay with us. We'll be back in a bit. But first, our final panel, as I say, we'll be back later this half hour. But coming up...